Hi everyone, I'm Shinjinji. Welcome to the 13th episode of the Night in the Woods in Unity series. In this episode we are going to finish the dial system. The first thing that we are going to do is to remove the option buttons. Let's start by going to the scripts folder and creating a new one named Dialog. Inside this last one, create a new C Sharp script named Dialog Controls. Open the script and paste the code you'll find in the video description. This code is the one that handles the controls that will allow to skip, change and select the dialog. Pressing A or D will change the current option displayed, while with the spacebar you'll be able to skip the dialog and finally pressing Enter, you'll select the option displayed. Back to Unity, go in the dialog container game object and select the options one. Add the dialog controls to it. In the text field, drag the one in the bubble game object. Then, go in the dialog runner and add two new events on the on option start. Drag into both of them the options game object. Then, in the first one, select dialog controls set starting option. While in the second one, select dialog controls set option displayed to true. Add the same one to the options and event, this time to false. This will allow us to interact with the options only when they are displayed. Then remove all the events for the text and the continue game object. Now go in the player game object and open the player controller to this script. Import yarn so that we can create an instance of the dial runner, initialize it by searching for the dial runner in the scene and finally check if the dial is running. If it is, then return so that the lines below won't get executed, thus disabling the character's controls. In Unity, go to the options game object and select one of the buttons. Change the source image to none and set the color alpha to zero. Then modify the font size of the text inside the button to zero. And do not forget, like I did, to uncheck the interactable checkbox and set the navigation to none. Do the same for the other button and delete the continue one. Disable the dialog container since it will be enabled by the dialog UI component and run the game. You'll now be able to go to the next line by pressing the spacebar, change options with the A and D keys and select the currently displayed one by pressing enter. Now that we have removed the option buttons, it's time to trigger the dialog from the interaction icon we created in the previous episode. Go in the dial folder inside scripts and create a new c script named npc. Open it and paste the code of the script. This one is in charge of loading the dialog and make it start from the node specified in the talk to node variable. Let's add the npc component to the Sally character. Write the name, the starting node and add the dialog to it. Click on the dialog runner game object and set the size to 0. Delete the start node and uncheck the start automatically checkbox. Now go to the scripts folder, inside triggers and interactions, open the action dialog script and paste the code for it. What you need to know about this is that the check for nearby NPC method retrieves all the NPC in the scene that are in the player's range and also have a dial to run. If one is found, the dialog gets triggered. Let's test it. So if you go to the Sally character and click on the interaction icon, the dialog gets triggered now, but not in the right position. To make so that the dialog appears above the character who is talking, go in the dial runner and open the dialog UI script. Inside the class, create a private string that will be used to retrieve the text before it's streamed. Then, under the doRunLine method, create a public method so that we can get the string of the text we previously created outside of this class. In the doRunLine method, we are going to move down the text variable, the onlineStart.invoke method, so that the text is initialized before that call. Then we are going to save the untrimmed text and perform the actual trim, since we want to get rid of the character's name in the dialog bubble. Finally, in the do run options method, under the options text variable, write the following. This will make sure that we can also retrieve the option 
in the same variable. In the scripts folder in TrueDialog, create a new C-sharp script named DialogMover. Open it and paste the code. In this class we get the text from the variable we declared in the dialog UI script and we search for the character who's talking. If it doesn't have one, it means it is an option, so the character will be the player. Then we search for the game object in the scene with the same name as the one retrieved from the text variable and put the dialog bubble on top of it. Drag the dialog mover component to the dialog bubble and go into dialog runner game object. Here we are going to add to the online start event a new one. Drag the dialog bubble on it and select the dialog bubble that set dialog on talking character method. Run the game to see if it works. Now it's time for the last finishing touch. Remove the placeholder text in the dialog bubble and enable the dialog container. Then in the bubble game object create a UI image. Add a layout element component to it. And check ignore layout. And direct transform anchor select middle left. Duplicate the image change the rect transform anchor of the new one to the middle right and rename them to option arrow left and option arrow right. In the sprites folder inside dialog import the option arrow images and put them in the source image of the specified one. Change the width and the height to 20 for both of them. Then select the text and lock it. Write something in it and select one of the arrow. In the scene, be sure to position it near the bounds of the text. The same for the other one. Unlock the inspector, select both the option arrow and disable them. Then go in the dialog runner game object and the on option start event add two new ones. One for the option arrow left and the other for the option arrow right. Select game object that set active to true then do the same for the on options and event, but this time set them to false. Disable the dialog container and run the game. Now when the options are displayed, the option arrows appear, letting the user know that it's possible to go left or right to choose another option. We have now finished the dialog system. If there are more things that you wish that I cover in this series, let me know in the comments below. For now I'll take a break since I want to focus on a project of mine which is going to be featured in the channel very soon, so stay tuned for that. This is all for this video, like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when the next episode comes out and as always I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the journey!